a memory. Amen. Just a memory. Not real anymore. God brought us out. Well, hallelujah. I want to say thank you again for everybody that came out yesterday. You know, there's, there's a lot of churches and people where they die before they get out there and sing on the street and down like that. But my philosophy is if you can sing in here, you ought to be able to sing out there. Preach out there. That's right. That's right. And uh, so I appreciate y'all that came. Not ashamed of the Lord. We had, uh, we probably had 60 something singing, probably had close to 80 with all the people that came in around to support us and pray and uh, give out literally, literally, oh my goodness, maybe closer to a thousand tracks and flyers both together. Uh, and, and, uh, and no tell how many thousand people heard the singing. They said you could hear it way up the street. And so uh, praise God for that. Thank you. That was a tremendous witness. And we was real nice and polite and uh, tried, to be, <laughs> tried to behave ourselves. You know, if we was in, in one town or another, we might have come on a little stronger. But where you want to go back, you know, we, have, we didn't want to blast them out there and get run off. So uh, the door's still open. Praise God for that. All right. Now take your Bible and turn to the book of Jonah. Jonah chapter number two. The book of Jonah chapter number two. Here tonight. And uh, we'll look at, uh, you know the outline of the book of Jonah. Jonah chapter 1, Jonah's running from God. Jonah chapter 2, Jonah's running to God. Jonah chapter 3, Jonah's running with God. Jonah chapter 4, Jonah runs ahead of God. That's an easy way to remember the book of Jonah. There's only one chapter he was right, and that was chapter 3. <laughs> Messed up all uh, uh, the other three. Now, so tonight, here in Jonah chapter number uh, 2 tonight, um, Let's, uh, let's see here. Uh, let's just go ahead and read, begin reading at verse number one. Uh, jo then Jonah prayed. Now, when was that? Right, so three days and three nights in the belly of the fish. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly and said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me out of the belly of hell, cried I, and thou heardest my voice. My, for thou hast cast me into the deep, into the midst of the seas, and the floods can pass me about, and all thy billows and thy waves passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight, and yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. The waters can pass me about, even to the soul. The depths close me round about. The weeds were wrapped about my head. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. And my prayer came in unto thee, into thine holy temple. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. But I will sacrifice unto thee. With the voice of thanksgiving, I will pay that that I vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. And the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. I'll title the sermon tonight, The Preacher Who Got His Degree From Well. Uh, this preacher here tonight got a tremendous degree and the, the best education in the world by experience and hard knocks. This man here, the book of Jonah, written 770-ish B.C. before Christ. It has four chapters, 48 verses, 1,321 words. The word Jonah means a dove. And this is one of the great classic Bible stories. And it is a real story that happened to a real man in a real time and was swallowed by a real whale and was in him real three real days and three real nights. No other book and story in the Bible is attacked more than the Bible critics and scholars than the book of Jonah. The book of Jonah is laughed at, made fun of, and there's hardly any Bible college you'll go to in the country that does not teach the book of Jonah is simply an allegory and it's not a real story. Uh, as obviously, it's just so, it's so uh, un unbelievable that it could not have literally happened. Now tonight, 
We as Bible believers know that is a bunch of baloney. We know that it is a, is a real thing. The, uh, the, the skeptics here, when they come to the book of Jonah, they have an absolute mental breakdown. Uh, they go crazy. They, they say it's, it's just teaching the truth. There's no way. Let me tell you why we take the book of, jo uh, of Jonah literally. The reason you take the book of Jonah literally is because Jesus said in Matthew 12, 40, as Jonah was in the whale's belly three days and three nights, the Son of Man will be in the heart of the earth. Jesus taught that Jonah was a real man, and he was in the real belly of a real whale. I preached it one Sunday morning years ago, and there's a little educated fella from Texas come up to me, and he said, uh, he said, well, uh, he said, I mean to correct you, but uh, the Bible don't say that's a whale. It said it was a great fish. And uh, that's what it says in the book of Jonah. And I said, well, look at Matthew 12, 40. And I turned it to him, pointed it where Jesus said, as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly. And he went, oh, it does say that, don't it? I said, it sure does, sure does. Now listen, if Jesus said it was a whale, it was a whale. And if your grandma said it was a big fish and not a whale, your grandma was wrong. A whale is a big fish. Now the scientists, they go crazy. No, whale's well, not a fish, it's a mammal. Well, they're the ones that divided it all up like that. When God made them and put them in the water, big old things that swim is a fish. Amen. And that's how, so you're better off to take the Bible definition of word. Uh, the Bible's not wrong. I remember when I first got saved and I heard somebody say, well, a fish couldn't really, they proved that a whale's throat isn't big. And it bothered me. It shook me. I wasn't about 18 years old. I thought, oh my goodness. Maybe, maybe, maybe. I laugh at stuff like that now. I laugh at stuff like that. Listen, people, now I'm going I'm to give you some, uh, some example. There have been six-foot skeletons found in the belly of whale sharks. Six-foot skeleton of a man. I doubt seriously if Jonah was six feet tall. Emerson, who was an authority on whales, studied that the sulfur bottom whale some of them are 90 feet long, long as, almost as long as this auditorium, and, and 100, weigh 147 tons, and have air pockets in their sinuses that are 600 feet uh, cubic, uh, cubic, in their sinuses. That means ever how many 600 cubic feet, as much as that thing right there, uh, Jonah wasn't nothing but a big bugger. And, and that whale, no, if it had been in his nose, if he's got a 600-foot cubic space in his sinuses, and he just blowed Jonah out like that or picked him out. But Jonah went down into the belly of the whale is what the Bible teaches. Uh, the Princeton Review, 1927, there was a man found alive and unconscious in the belly of a whale and had been in there for two days. August 25th, 1881, James Bartlett was a steersman on a whale whaling vessel, and they cut the stomach open of a giant whale and found a dead man intact, and he was perfect to people that went down on the Titanic. And but he was a man inside of a whale's belly. Are you listening to me? Who, I, and uh, you say, well, see there, he was purple. He died. There's no way Jonah could have lived in the belly of a whale. Who said he lived that long? I know in the Bible it said Jonah stayed alive the whole time. I mean, before, I, before I bring you the thoughts of this message, uh, there's very good indication to be a type of Christ who died, went to the tomb, that Jonah did not live the entire time. Let me just throw some at you right quick. Because every time you say that, people that's never heard it say, oh my goodness, I can't believe it. That's not true. And they go crazy. You, you Be careful of saying something wrong just because you ain't never heard it before. You got to be careful about stuff like that. Just because you ain't never heard it don't mean it's wrong. You know, uh, first of all, the Bible said that uh, uh, he, he, after three days and three nights, he prayed. Now, honest to goodness, I don't care how backslid you are, would it take you three days and nights to pray if you was in a whale's belly? I cannot imagine him staying there one whole day, one whole night, not even speaking to the Lord. I ain't never been that backslid, buddy. Son, before I hit the blubber pool, I would have been saying, God, help me! I mean, can you imagine them throwing him out there in that water like that? And they go in there and he does a backflip and lands in that water and he's swimming up. That'd be scary enough. Lord, I've been calling on God right then, wouldn't you? I, I ain't swimming around like that. That water blew, 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 blew. That water's everywhere. All of a sudden, uh, the whale coming out like that. And the Lord said, you hungry? He said, I sure am. I'd like to have a, I'd like to have a mess of man. I am with some tater tots and, and hush puppies and tartar sauce. I ain't been to the man camp in months. And the Lord said, take 30 degrees right. 
bam, up, up, up 16 degrees, horizontal, vertical, up, up 10 degrees. Open your mouth, boy, and the whale goes like here. And all of a sudden, a backslid preacher goes right down his throat, and it's like you sliding down blubber. It's warm, and it's just soft like guts, and, and, it, and, and it stunk. Can you imagine? Now, what? have you ever spit up? Has anybody in here ever spit up? I'm not talking about throwing up. Spit up, where you just sort of just something pops out. Oh, Lord. It tastes like battery acid. And that, it, was, it was strawberry shortcake when it went in. And look what you've done to it. That shows what you are. You're a sinner. I mean, I mean, brother, it can be a, a ribeye steak, tender, and baked potato, or a, or a candy bar, or a Pepsi. When it goes in, and we come out, good Lord, knock a dog down. And, and, you, and you, can you imagine, can you imagine if that comes out of us, what would whale spit up taste like? Be muratic acid, son. It eat a hole in that wall, I guarantee it. And he was in there, and, and Jonah was down there. Said, Whoa, oh, you couldn't open your eyes. It, it burned and, and all that. And he said, if I ain't going like this, going like that, you ain't going to tell me, you ain't going to convince me he waited three days to pray. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. He went out, and then he said, he said, he said, my soul fainted within me. My soul fainted within me. I'd like to explain that verse to me. My soul fainted within me. He said, the earth about me with her bars. The earth. You know, hell has bars. Hell has gates. Hell has bars. Now, I'm talking about the burning part of hell. The Old Testament hell where there was, where there was a paradise and hell fire. And, there, and you know what else he said? He said, out of the belly of hell cried I. Now you say, well, he, he meant the belly of the whale. Well, that ain't what he said. He said the belly of hell. You say, but I believe he meant, well, I tell you what you do. You go on and believe in what you think it meant, and I'll just believe what it says. And I'll see it to judgment. Amen. Amen. Well, I still think he meant, you can, you can think whatever you want. Uh, we're a Bible-believing church, right? If he said he cried out of the belly of hell, bless God, he cried out of the belly of hell. Amen. And he cried out, God help me. And the Lord put him back in that body. And brother, he said the earth was about, had seaweed wrapped around my neck. He said, I'm willing to do anything y'all, you want me to do. And the Lord said, all right. Uh, ain't you about sick? And he said, I have never made, eat anything that made me so sick in my life. I've eaten dead sharks. I've eaten I've eat squid that would look that was like puke. But I've never tasted nothing in my life that made me as sick as a backslid preacher. Don't ever ask me to eat another backslid. Ah, there's nothing more sickening than a backslid preacher. I can't stand preachers. Blah, I'm about ready to puke, Lord. And the Lord said, fly, swim. Over here, over there, this way a little bit. Over this way a little bit. Over this way a little bit. You're almost to the beach. Puke. And buddy, he went, blah, like that. And out come Jonah, buddy. Well, puke, seaweed wrapped around his neck. He didn't have a nice tie. He didn't have a nice suit on. Uh, so he didn't even have his Bible. But brother, he Nineveh was a day, it was three days journey. And God put Jonah in overdrive and got him there in one day. I don't know how he did it. I think he went running like a roadrunner. All the way across there, and there's 120,000 people in Nineveh that couldn't tell the right hand from the left. There's either, there's either mentally slow or maybe that meant little kids. I don't know which. But 120,000 didn't know the right hand from the left. And Jonah come into town and said, I've got my degree from well. Thus saith the Lord. Yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And son, they got right and they repented. That old boy got his degree. That old boy got his degree. Now let me say a few things about that tonight and, and we'll go. First of all, here's what he learned in his degree. Number one, he found out you cannot run away from God Almighty. You hear me tonight? You can't run from God. You can run, but you can't hide. You can run a long way, but God will get you. Uh, you can go a long way, and you, Jonah tried it. E Elijah tried it. Jacob tried it, and God was right there waiting on him and didn't have to move to get there. Ladies and gentlemen, you found out Psalm 139 verse 7 said, Whither shall I go from thy presence? I, if I go into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, thou art there. Who can the Lord? Nobody. How can you hide from somebody that's everywhere at one time? You can't go nowhere he ain't. You can't not. You can't outrun him. You can't get away from him. You cannot find from God. And let me tell you tonight, young people, you hear me? 
You ain't never been nowhere where God didn't see you. You ain't never done anything that God didn't record it. You ain't never done one thing. What you done last night is on record. What you looked at on your phone, where you went, the movies you watched, he saw it. Everybody standing right there watching you. You cannot outrun God Almighty. You hear me? That's right. I heard about this guy. Giving his testimony, he said uh, eight years ago he went and joined the uh, army. He said what he did. He said he's raised by his grandma, and she was real strict. He said she's a real, 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 real strict Christian. And he said I got tired of it. He said I got tired of going by this rule and that rule and this rule and that. He said I ain't going to. I'm sick of this. I'm out of here. I'll just go join the army. And so he went and joined the army. And when he went down there, there's thousands of people down there that day. And they said there was a bunch of people set up, and uh, they assigned assign them barracks. And when you join the army, then they said. Uh, you, you check us. Are you uh, Catholic, Protestant, or Jew? And uh, and the Catholics check the box, and the, all the Christians check Protestants, and and the Jews check Jew. And they put them there. And he said there was fifty six men in my barrack. He said two of them men signed up as Christians. He said my grandma prayed, God, don't let him get away. He said they put my bed right between. Them two Christians. That's what he said. He said, I had a Christian on one side and a Christian on the other. And the Lord said, you, you ain't going somewhere. Uh, uh, you know, you can't get away from God, people. You can't get away from God. You can run, but you can't hide. You hear me tonight? All you little kids, all you teenagers, you can't get away from him. He knows what you're doing. He knows what you're saying. He knows where you're going. You think my mom and daddy don't know nothing about this. I wouldn't worry about mom and daddy as much as I was worried about him. Said a guy one time, he's out there stealing watermelons out of somebody's watermelon patch, and he got ready to steal this watermelon. He said, now, son, here's what I'm going to show you how to do this. You look this way. You look that way. You look this way. You look that way. If nobody's coming, you grab it. And he pulled his heart like that and he said, Daddy, you didn't look that way. If you looked that way, you've seen somebody looking down at you like it's right here. You cannot run from God. If you're here not running from God, you're wasting your time and digging yourself into a mess. He found that out. That he got a degree from well. But he found that out real quick. Number two, he found out there's a high cost. Of leaving God's will. Now you can do whatever you want to. You're a free moral agent. But Jonah paid a mighty high cost. For running from God. You know what he done? He run out of the Lord's will. He said I'll just go down here and take me a cruise. I'll just go on vacation. I, I, I'll just take me a cruise. And I'll forget this preaching business. I don't want to preach them crazy people no way. Probably wouldn't do no good. I, and he run down here. And he paid the fare thereof. The Bible said he paid the fare thereof. Now if you run from God. And you get out of God's will. Something stupid. You know what will happen? You know who's going to pay? You are, buddy. You're going to pay. You will not leave God's will and come out clean and not have to pay a price. You will pay a price. Time would fail me to tell of all the teenagers and young people that I've seen sit on the front row just like all these are. Sit on the second row. I not, never miss a service. And then maybe got a girlfriend or maybe got a boyfriend that pulled them out of church. Pull them out of church. That's the biggest danger you girls got. A boyfriend that'll pull you out of church. Or a girlfriend that'll pull you out of church. And the next thing you know, they wasn't going. Next thing you know, they wasn't going. Next thing you wasn't know, they wasn't going. And the next thing you know, it's an unhappy relationship. And then there's a baby come uh, that wasn't planned for. And then there's a divorce if there ever was a marriage. And then there's fussing and fighting and in-laws. And uh, I'm telling you tonight, Jonah found out if you run out of God's will, there's a high cost to pay. Hey, amen. There's a pay, there's a price to for those that run from God's will. You know what he said? He said God made the sea, God made the dry ground, God made the well, God made everything. God, I, I'm I'm sorry. He woke up in the belly of the well and said, "Salvation is of the Lord." Amen. That's right, brother. He found out salvation is of the Lord. It's been a many a man. They've been a many a girl. They've been a many a teenager. Got out of God's will. Got out, got drunk, wrecked, woke up in the ER, and whether they're on life support and their family standing around them, and bought their way back to God and said, God, I paid a high price for getting out of your will. And all God's people said, Thank you. Didn't have to ask you. He found out, I'll tell you something else, he found out. Jonah found out how to really pray. You know, if you don't pray hard, 
the Lord will give you something to make you pray hard. Uh, some of y'all lazy on your prayer. Like, I ain't fussing at you. I do the same thing. When things are going good, like that song she sang this morning, God's only begotten is sometimes forgotten when things seem to go our way. Listen, I, I love good times. I don't like trouble. The Lord knows I hate I hate difficulties and everything. But you ever know, you get to sailing along pretty good. Everything, you got your bills paid. I mean, that's what's wrong with some of y'all here tonight. You got more money than you've ever had. Your health is good. You're sailing pretty high. But I'm warning you tonight as your friend. You better get to praying. You better sacrifice. I would strongly advise you. Fast, let this flesh suffer a little bit. Because if you don't, the Lord will give you something to make it suffer. He'll do it. He'll do it. Uh, he's done it to me. He's done it to others. If you belong to him, he's going to let you, uh, Something will happen. Something will happen. People say, oh, Brother Danny, why you have to be so negative? Because I'm right and telling the truth. Something will happen. You mark it down. When you're sailing along, every, like everything's great, and every, everything, whoo, boy, let the good times roll. And you just barely pray a little prayer about that long every day. God bless mom and God bless daddy. Thank Jesus for being good to us. Let's go have fun. All right, if you get like that, it won't be long that something will happen to put you back down on your knees where you belong. Listen, I've had some bad times in my life. I've had some hard times in my life. But now I look back now and I can see it was during in those times when I really learned how to pray. If you ask Jonah before he died, Jonah, when did you really learn how to pray? It wouldn't be before when he's out there eating with the preachers and having a good time, fellowship, and going to the steakhouse and eating a, eating a big meal. I mean, that's good and I love it. But that ain't when he learned. You know when he learned how to pray? Brother, when he woke up in the bottom of the ocean, he said, if I get out of here, it's going to be you, God. Hey, ain't nothing I can do. I'm sorry. God, help me. God, help me. I remember one night I was, <laughs> I was coming down the mountain, and it was uh, one, two, two, two forerunners ago, I think. Well, that silver one, I think it was a silver one I had. And uh, about five, six, seven years ago, no, it was more than that. It was 10 years ago now, or, more, or longer. And uh, I, I trade about every five years, but it, it's been at least 10 years. I was coming down the mountain, I drove all the way from Virginia in the snow. Y'all remember me telling about that? And I drove, I left Brother Larry's over yonder, and it was pouring the snow. And I put that thing in four-wheel drive. They tried to get me to spin an eyes. I said, I ain't doing it. I'm going home. And it was 10 o'clock at night. It was snowing so hard. There wasn't nobody out on the road. And I just moved, kept going, kept going. Finally got out on a bigger road. All right, I'm doing pretty good. It snowed all night long. And it snowed all the way to Asheville. I got to Asheville. And I got to Asheville. I thought, glory to God. I've made it. I've made it. To come down Old Fort Mountain. And I come down through there. And, I, and, and the road was clear. And I, I put it up on about... 65, 70, and put it in, on uh, cruise control. And I was flying down through there, and what I did not know, that even though there was no snow on the interstate, there was black ice. And there was a little thin sheet of ice down through there, and I noticed the car off the road and everything, and I thought, well, about that time that thing started going like this, I was doing 65 miles an hour. And I went like that, and I, was, oh, no. and I, I mean, before I knew it, I was going like this. And, going, and you know, I don't know if you've ever had cruise control on ice, but you, you can't cut it off. Like when you when you hit the brakes, it stays on somehow or another. I don't know because you, you you have to brake before. That's what cuts it off. So if you, if you're still going like it, it don't it don't cut off. And and my, I could hear my back tire just like that. And my front tire is trying to stop me. And, and I, I'm going down through there like that because I was back in two wheel drive then. And all of a sudden, buddy, that thing went like that. And and I and you're on the interstate. And I said. God help me! Just like that. I did. And it went. And I back in, I hit the guardrail. Just made a little dent. And I went, Whoosh. it is a miracle. God, there wasn't a big truck coming right down there and smash me. And I put that thing in gear and eased it right on around through there and drove it on home. Buddy, I, I mean, my heart was flying. I remember, I, you, you want a sincere prayer? That was a sincere prayer. Buddy, I meant that with all my heart. And you know what? Jonah learned how to pray. You know where you learn how to pray? In the emergency room. You know where you learn how to pray? When the ambulance is coming over to your house. 
to get one of your daddy or your mama or one of your kids. You know, when you learn how to pray, brother, when the doctor comes out and says, I got bad news, that's when you learn how to pray. Jonah got his degree, brother. He learned how to pray. It wasn't a prayer class that he taught, prayer 101 or something like that. Brother, he, he's in life or death. It's either, God, you're going to get me out or I'm done. God, you're going to do this or I'm finished. That's when you learn how to pray. When you get to the point in your life where you say, God, if you don't do this, I'm a goner. That's when you'll learn how to pray. You say, I don't want to go through that, brother. Well, I don't either. That's just the way it goes. Just the way it goes. Amen? There's been a lot of men learning how to pray in a foxhole over in Vietnam. And bullets start flying them bombs. You thought I learned how to pray then, but learn how to pray. Learn how to pray. He learned how to pray. He found out salvation is of the Lord. He said, God, if I get out, you're going to get me out. All his crying, all his begging, all his bargaining, all his finagling around. Finagle is a Greek word that you uneducated hillbillies don't know. That means like a rat trying to find a place, a way to get out of a room. And he said, uh, Lord, I cried unto you. And he said, he brought me out. He brought me out. He brought me out. I like the old song said, he brought me out. Amen. He brought me out from that miry clay. He brought me out like she's talking about Lodibar. He didn't leave us down there, brother. He brought us out. Hallelujah. I'm glad Jonah said, he brought me out. Yeah, one day. And the last thing he learned in his degree was he found out that God is a God of second chains. Jonah was recommissioned, cleaned up. I'm glad for that scripture. Now, for some people, if we'd have had this modern day group of Christians writing the Bible, they said God was through with him. He didn't know, he disobeyed, and God called one of them good prophets out of Jerusalem to preach that revival. But the Lord didn't do that, did he? Same man. You know what that means? Once called, always called. You can mess up, you can run from God and make a fool of yourself, but if God's ever called you to preach, brother. It's a divine, is without repentance. And the Lord don't take that away. Why didn't he get somebody else to preach that sermon on the day of Pentecost? Why did he let Peter, the guy that cussed and denied him? Because he's a God of second chains. I'm glad he's a God of second chains. And third chains. And fourth chains. And fifth chains. Thank God. Peter, I, I learned that. Uh, Jonah learned that. He said, I got my degree from, from well. And I'm going to tell you, just because you've messed up, just because you've been foolish, just because you've done something horrible or evil, does not mean God's done with you. You get back and you get right with God. Get back on fire. Get in there and serve the Lord, brother. God's a God of second chains. That's what he learned. That's a degree right there, buddy. Guarantee you that fellow knows more. David got a second chance. David paid a price, but thank God he got a second chance. Lady told me one time, she said, Now David ruined his life and he never was a king after that. I thought, well, You ignorant. I don't know what Bible you've been reading. David remained king till he died, people. Now he paid a price. He did. He lost four kids. Pay for that one. Uh, he, he, I mean, he, he paid a price, but he remained king till the day he died. He had battles the rest of his life. Samson, Samson, the man of God, he really blew it. But God said his hair began to grow again. That's the Lord right there. The hair of his head began to grow again. And old Samson started getting stronger and stronger. He said, I lost my eyesight. I sure paid for my sin, but I'm feeling better every day, Lord. And the Lord said, all right, boy, I'm being good to you. He said, God, you sure have been merciful to me. I know you you could restore my sight, Lord, but you probably ain't going to do that. But that's all right, Lord, as long as I'm right, as long as I know I'm going to heaven. That's all that matters to me. And, and he's learning. And one day, this little boy, he would take him around and show him you know, how to go to the bathroom and stuff. He said, take me over there and put me where them pillars are. And that little boy took him over there, and there's thousands and thousands of Philistines there, and Samson bowed him. And he said, oh, God, strengthen me just this one time. Just this one time. Remember me, oh, Lord. And the Holy Ghost come on him. He pulled that thing down, and he killed more Philistines in his death than he did in his life. You know why? Because God gave that old boy one more chance. You ought to thank God for that. He got his degree from well. Let's stand tonight with our heads bowed. Let's all stand tonight. Heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. Amen. Can I just come up here and play something softly tonight? Every head bowed. Every eye closed. Maybe there's somebody here tonight. Say, preacher.
I want my degree, and I sure don't want to go to no belly of no whale for it. I think I want to take it the easy way. I just want to obey God. She's playing softly. Let's get around the altar now if you want to come and pray. Lord, that's some lessons. That's, that's, a, that's how he got his degree from whale, y'all. Amen. You can learn it the easy way, or you can learn it the hard way. Learn it the easy way is listen to what I preach tonight. Learn it the hard way is go ahead and run from God and be stupid and look right where it gets you. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. God help us tonight, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for these lessons from the Word of God. Lord, we know when you get a degree like Jonah did, Lord, there ain't nothing the world can do to take it away from you. Lord, we know the experience, what a teacher that was. To the great prophet Jonah, that priest revival and had 120,000 people. Uh, over 100,000 people got saved. Lord, I guess probably the greatest revival in the, in the, in the Bible that uh, he preached and after he got his recommission. Lord, after you come forth out of the belly of the whale, maybe there's somebody here tonight in the belly of the whale. I don't know. God, please help them turn to you with all their heart and holler, salvation is of the Lord. God, do what ought to be done in our lives tonight. God, as we go out this week, help every one of us to make up our mind that we are going to serve you with all of our heart. Lord, God, help us. Father, please, we pray. Please, Lord, we do pray. Do what ought to be done in our life. We'll thank you for it. We love you. For we ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake we pray. Amen. Some still praying tonight. Some still praying tonight. God speaking to you tonight. Amen. 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 All right, hearts clear. Amen. Well, hope you enjoyed this little lesson tonight from the Bible. You know that that's an amazing book right there, people. Amen. You just keep reading it and keep reading it, and things just start popping out. And it's a it, it, it's it's like trying to dip the ocean out with a thimble. And I think one of the regrets I'm going to have when I leave this world, if I ever do, is that I didn't if, that I didn't put more effort time into getting more out of the Word of God and praying. And don't just, don't stay on your phone all day and leave your Bible laying. Put your nose in that book. Listen, there's no way in the world that that phone is of God. It ain't of God. You can use it for the Lord, don't go crazy. But you cannot tell me God gave us cell phones. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. It's been a curse. Are, are people more right with God now than they was for self? No, they ain't. Buddy, it's ruined most Christians. Ruined them. And it's not your friend, it's your enemy. Use that phone, use that phone just enough. Stay in touch. Do what you need to do. Good information. Study it. That's okay. But that other stuff, you'd be a whole lot better off to leave it off. If you can't, throw it in the lake. And uh, if you can't, I mean, so you're addicted. Most of y'all are addicted to it. You're absolutely addicted. They done a survey not long ago, no lie, and they said. I surveyed a bunch of 20-ish year old millennials and they said they had rather give up their right to vote than to have to give up TikTok. Now think about that. The truth is, half you in here would. Well, I don't want vote, ain't gonna matter. Huh? Yeah. That's our attitude nowadays. They'd rather give up their right to vote as an American citizen than have to give up TikTok. I heard, a, I heard a guy the other day. He said, I love TikTok. He said, "That's I stay on, I'll, I watch more of that than anything. Well, and your IQ is getting lower and lower and lower because a bunch of idiots on there. And I, know, I mean, I admit it's fascinating. It really is. It's fascinating. You see one, you don't see nothing. You see one, you don't see nothing. See one. And I'm not talking about bad stuff, just some fool jumping off a 99 foot high rock or something. It's fascinating. It's captivating. It, it just grips you. And so I'm, 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 I'm pleading with you tonight. Let it all, lay off that stuff a little bit. Spend some time with God and His Word. And he'll bless you for it. All right. Amen. Everybody had a good day? Say amen. amen. Glory to God. It's good to have been in church, isn't it? All right. We're going we're to uh, dismiss. Y'all be sure and fellowship a little bit. Don't miss Wednesday night. Get in a habit. Don't, don't get in a habit of missing Wednesday night, y'all. Get in church Wednesday night. Some of y'all been missing on Wednesday night. You need to get in here. You need to get in here. Uh, we're going to need it. And uh, so let's get in here Wednesday night. And don't forget now. Oh, I didn't mention about our baptism. Uh, if you want to get baptized next Sunday night, sign that paper right there. 
Because we don't have several, we're going to wait and put it off a little bit longer. But I know we've had several ask me about it. Maybe they're not here today. But if you want to get baptized, if you've been saved but not been baptized, sign up on that paper tonight so we'll know, okay? All right, God bless you. You can go. Appreciate you. Amen. Have a good evening. Everybody be friendly, friendly, friendly.